Father, we thank you for the leadership development meeting tonight. We pray you open our eyes to the treasures in your word in Jesus' name. And let your word strengthen us. Let your word quicken our inner man. That Lord will move forward in the work of the Lord with the everlasting arms underneath us in Jesus' name. We pray that every weakness and every dimness of sight you take away from us. Our passion, our purpose, our power, we move on to accomplish what you have called us for in the kingdom, in the field of service, in your work, in the ministry, in Jesus' name. We bless your name because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can have your seats. We're coming to Exodus chapter 1. And tonight we're looking at verses 7 through to 12. Exodus chapter 1, reading from verse 7. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty. And the land was filled with them. It tells us in verse 8, it says, Now there rose up if a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. In verse 9, it says, And he said unto his people, That is to the Egyptians, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Verse 10, Come, come on. Let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out anyone, they, may, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. In verse 11, therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their bodies, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. Now in verse 12, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. We're seeing the children of Israel, 70 in number, coming into uh, Egypt. And Joseph and the sons of Joseph were already there. And as eventually they were growing and growing after the death of Jacob and after the death of Joseph, they grew and multiplied. They were becoming mighty in that land, exactly as God had told Abraham. Because the word of God cannot be disannulled or reversed by any situation and by any power on earth. And as they multiplied, this Pharaoh and this king that knew not, not, knew not Joseph, then said, look at these people, they're multiplying. Number one, if they continue like this, they're already mightier than we are. They might be so strong, they join another country, another nation, and make war against us. And they escape from the land. Escape from the land. That's what God had told Abraham that your people, your descendants, will go to a strange land, that's Egypt, and then at the time appointed, I will take them out of the land of Egypt to come and settle in the land of Canaan. That plan of God, that promise of God, and that prediction and prophecy, that's what Pharaoh did not want to happen. Of course, Pharaoh did not know the intention of God and the plan of God. But God had ordained that they will come out of the land. And he didn't want that. 
That's one of the reasons he then did what he did. But the children of Israel began, they continued to grow and were becoming mightier and mightier every time. They persecuted them, they oppressed them, they afflicted them. But the affliction, the oppression, and the persecution could not reduce them in any way tonight we're looking at the topic israel's protection and preservation under persecution israel's protection and preservation under persecution three things we're looking at number one we're looking at number one the multiplication of the population of israel Number two, the mischief against the posterity of Israel. Number three, the might at the preservation of Israel. Look at number one. Number one, the multiplication of the population of Israel. The will of God, the word of God, the way of God, the wisdom of God, what he intended to do. He was watching over the children of Israel. He had a plan. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jacob became Israel and then out of one of the children, one of the tribe Judah, Christ will come and that had been decided before the beginning of the world. If Egypt, if they were able to crush, if they were able to exterminate, if they were able to destroy the children of Israel, how will Christ come? That's the reason why the plan of Pharaoh could not take effect and could not be fulfilled. And they still multiplied that population of Israel despite what the children of Egypt, what they did. Look at Exodus again, chapter 1 verse 7. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and their works exceeding mighty exceedingly mighty and the land was filled with them look at three things here number one we're looking at the promise for the people of israel number two the performance of the promise given to Israel. Number three, the preservation despite the persecution of Israel. Number one, the promise for the people of Israel. See what God had said in Genesis chapter 15 verse 5. Genesis 15 verse 5. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them and he said unto him so shall thy seed be look at the stars if you are able to number them which means they were innumerable they were numberless and as they were numberless that talks about their multitude it says so as numerous as they are as uncountable as they are, as many as they are, so shall thy seed be. That the promise that they will grow into a multitude. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, and he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. Chapter 26 of Genesis, looking at verse 4. And I will make thy seed to multiply. The promise had been given to Abraham. And the promise is now given to Isaac, his son. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And will give unto thy seed all those countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. That's bringing in the promise that Christ will come. And through the sacrifice of Christ. And through the provision of Christ. And through the death of Christ. Then salvation will come to all the nations of the earth. Because of that final promise of God and that final prophecy. That's why everything that anyone did against the people of Israel, that's why it could not succeed. Because those promises and prophecies were tied to the coming of Christ. Look at verse 5. In verse 5 it says, because that Abraham 
obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Look at chapter 35. Now, Genesis 35, and we're reading from verse 11. It says, And God said unto him, He's talking to Jacob now, I am. God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth shall be confirmed. Out of the two or three prophecies, the prophecy will be confirmed. It says unto Abraham, unto Isaac, now unto Jacob, it says, Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. And Kings shall come out of thy loins. And you know, this is how the king of kings and the lord of laws, this is how he came from the tribe of Judah, one of the tribes of Israel. Again, remember, God was doing all this so that the king of kings, the lord of lords, the prince of peace, and the one that will rule all over the whole universe so that he will come. And it will come through the tribes of Israel. And that's why God kept on repeating the promise that he gave unto him. Chapter 48, we're looking at verse 3. In chapter 48, verse 3, And Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared unto me at laws uh, in the land of Canaan and blessed me. Look at verse, uh, look at the next verse here, verse 4. And said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee, and I will make of thee a multitude of people, and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. Again, the land of Canaan had been given unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as an everlasting, for an everlasting possession. And all that uh, Pharaoh was saying, uh, don't multiply and become mighty and then link up with another nation and fight against us and then go out, they will go out of the land of Egypt. Whatever the plan and whatever the plot and whatever anyone would do, the Lord had given the land of Canaan, not Egypt, for an everlasting possession unto Israel. Now, everything is summarized in 1 Kings chapter 8, reading from verse 56. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 56. Blessed be the Lord that has given given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised there has not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant no promise of God can fail no promise of God will fail and the promise he has made to us the Israel of God the church of Christ the church of the living God that promise the same way he fulfilled the promise for Abraham Isaac and Jacob and for Israel and multiplied all those children of Israel the same thing you will find that is promised to the church will not fail upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. The promise he has made for the Christian, for the individual Christian, heaven and earth may pass away, but his word of prophecy and his word of promise cannot fail, fall away, cannot fail, because the promise of God is yea and amen in Christ to everyone that abides in Christ. We're looking at number two. Number two, the performance of the promise to Israel. The performance of the promise he had made that performance unto Israel. In Exodus chapter 1 verse 7, and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and was exceeding mighty. And the land was filled with them. That the performance of the promise. The Lord said, I hasten to perform my word, the word of God to Israel, to the church, to the Christian, 
to the believer, to the consecrated and committed, the word of God, the promise of God will have performance and fulfillment. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 10, reading from verse, uh, verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 20. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God. Him shall thou serve, and to him shall thou cleave and swear by his name. Verse 21. He is thy praise. He is thy God that has done for thee these great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. In verse 22, it says, Thy fathers went down into Egypt with three score and ten, seventy persons, and now the Lord thy God has made thee as the stars of heaven for multitude, they had multiplied. There were 70 when they went in, now there were more than 700, more than a million, and it was still growing. It tells us in Deuteronomy, uh, in, um, in, in Acts chapter 6, reading from verse 7, see the promise he had made to Israel, and see the promise not being fulfilled and performed, on the church it says and the word of god increased and the number of the disciples multiplied in jerusalem as you look at israel in the natural you look at israel in the spiritual and you look at the church and you see that the faithfulness of god reaches unto the heavens that what god had done for the children of israel is doing for the church and the word of god increased and the number of disciples multiplied in jerusalem greatly and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Acts chapter 9, reading from verse 31. In Acts chapter 9, verse 31, then at the church's rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and, uh, and Samaria, and they were edified, walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, were multiplied so all that were read in the old testament being fulfilled in the new testament all that we have read in the new testament about the church being fulfilled now in these last days concerning the church of the living god and all that you have read in the lives of other christians other believers in the bible you can take that and apply it to your life because as it was done for Israel and then the church, it was done for the early Christians and then for the Christians today, it was done for others in the past and then for you now in the present, it will be done in Jesus' name. We're looking at number three here. Number three is the preservation despite the persecution of Israel. The Lord preserved them. He had to preserve them because if they were not preserved, his purpose will fail and his purpose cannot fail. If they were not preserved, the covenant he had with Abraham will fail and he is the covenant keeper. His covenant cannot fail. It's because of that we understand. Anytime you look at the word of God and you see the promise of God and you see the prophecies of the Lord, you know this cannot fail because God is a promise keeper and he is a covenant keeper. The preservation despite the persecution of Israel. Look at Psalm 105, reading from verse 24. Psalm 105, verse 24. And he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. In verse 25, it says, He turned their heart to hate his people and deal subtly with his servant. We're coming to Acts chapter 7, verse 17. It says, But when the time of the promise drew near, which God had sworn to Abraham, the, pe the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. And then in verse 18, 
till another king arose which knew not Joseph. You are following the trend. You are following the fulfillment. You are following the performance. You are following that God never forgets what promise he has made. Abraham might have gone to glory. And the promise he made to Abraham still continued. Isaac might have died and gathered to his father Abraham up yonder. Yet the promise God had made to Isaac will not fail. And even Jacob might have gone. And Joseph might have gone. And all those original patriarchs, they all might have gone. But the promise of God. God still remains and God is still watching over his word to perform his word. The same thing that Christ gave the promise to the church and Christ has gone to heaven but the promise remains and Peter and John, James and the rest of the apostles they have all gone but the promise still remains. Those people that God used to write the New Testament and the Old Testament, they might have gone to glory, but the promise of God that he made and they wrote now, all those promises, all those predictions, all those prophecies are still intact and they are going to be fulfilled even on the church at this time and on every Christian of this generation in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 16, we're reading from verse 18. Here Christ said, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell as mighty as Pharaoh, as mighty as Nebuchadnezzar, as mighty as Herod, as mighty as any uh, difficult oppressor, despot in the world today, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. A greater amen. amen. Acts chapter 5, reading from verse 38. And now... I say unto you, refrain from these men. Uh, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, the council, they were trying to stamp out, stamp out the church, crush the church, destroy the church, scatter the church. And Gamaliel now told the apostle to step aside and he told the council, he said, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. He said, There's no point fighting, there's no point persecuting them. It's either of men or it's of God. If it's of men, it will fizzle out by itself. Anybody is doing something and then you're trying to fight, why are you fighting? Or you're struggling if it be of man it will not see the light of day it will not stand it will be crushed it will be scattered if it be of men it says it will come to not verse 39 verse 39 says but if it be of god if the posterity of israel be of god if the people of the church if it be of god if the establishment of the church be of God, if the planting of the church be of God, if the growth of the church be of God, if the progress of the church be of God, if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, no matter what power you have, and no matter what plot or project you have, if this be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. And when man fights against God, that man is going to be a loser. I said the man will be a loser. When any community, when any country, when the whole globe, the rest of the world, the whole universe, when they fight against God, their maker, the whole globe, all of them, all together, will be a loser. 
God will be the winner in every battle, in every war, in every conflict against him, anytime, anywhere, by anyone, in Jesus' name. Think about your life. God has raised you up to do something. God is moving you on to make progress. And God has planted you where you are, doing what you are doing. And he has ordained that this is what you will be. Anyone, any group of people, any company of people fighting against you. And against the purpose and the plan of God for your life. That man, those men, those people, they'll be terrible losers in Jesus' name. And you will be a winner. You'll be a winner with God in Jesus' name. But if this be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Let's apply, ye be found even to fight against God. We're coming to point number two here. Point number two, the mischief against the posterity of Israel. We're coming to Exodus chapter one. I'm reading from verse eight. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt that knew not Joseph. Look at verse nine. In verse 9, and he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. More and mightier than we. You can, uh, you can see there is speedy growth. Because before they came to Egypt, Egypt was already large. And people from all nations were coming to buy food from Egypt. And they had all these uh, various uh, clans and tribes and provinces in that whole land. And yet now as Israel came in and 70 souls came in, they so multiplied that they became more than the children of Israel. Now, the Egyptians also had military power before the children of israel came but now these uh, children of israel that came will say lately they have become mightier in strength and mightier in power than the egyptians and that's what pharaoh here was observing then in verse 10 it says in verse 10 come on let us deal wisely with them wisely don't you misunderstand the word wise or wisdom. There is uh, devilish wisdom. There is human wisdom. And then there is heavenly wisdom, which is godly wisdom. The wisdom he was referring to here, which some people are carrying about, is the wisdom of the world. But that wisdom of the world, Paul the Apostle said, the people of this world in their wisdom not knowing the plan of god he crucified the prince of glory he said let us deal wisely with them lest they multiply that is lest they continue multiplying and it come to pass that when their falleth out anyone they join also unto our enemies and fight against us and so get them up out of the land but they'll come out i said they will come out look at verse 11 in verse 11 therefore did it search over them task masters to afflict them with their bodies and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. Before I go off from that, be careful your relationship with the world. The children of Israel came in as free men, respected men, honored men. Pharaoh told um, Joseph, Bring your people. You've been so nice to this land. Bring them and put them in the richest place, in the wealthiest place, and take care of them. 
they were not slaves so they came in and they were free and they were living separate in the land of Goshen and then they kept on multiplying but they didn't watch because little by little the Egyptians now started asking them to do this to do this at that time there was no slavery it was just can you do this yes we can can you take care of my sheep of my cattle because you are versatile in taking care of cattle yes we can and they did but little by little they slaved them they, they became slaves they were not free anymore little by little they took them away from just taking care of themselves or taking care of cattle and they became bond servants they put them into bondage you see in the world if you're not careful with the people of the world what starts from normal fellowship normal friendship normal can you help me do this normal interaction eventually become slavery that they enslave you and you don't know in the passage of time in the process of time when you lose your liberty and you lose your freedom and you become a total slave grinding your nose on the on the uh, concrete land i pray god will give us wisdom in jesus name be careful who we'll say yes to do this yes sir do this yes madam and then yes yes then it becomes something compulsory have you not done that they become something that, that's your duty have you not done that then you become a slave you don't have any voice again any mind again and you don't know where you're going anymore because now you're a total slave i pray god will deliver us from total slavery in jesus name now the mischief against the posterity of israel we're looking at this under three subtitles number one the plot to afflict and enslave to afflict and enslave number two the plan to assimilate and exterminate and then number three their part to advance and expand Israel. Look at number one. Number one, the plot to afflict and enslave Israel. Already we have seen from what we have read in chapter one that they wanted to enslave them, afflict them. In chapter three, Exodus chapter three, and I'm reading from verse seven. Exodus chapter three, verse seven, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. They started with affection. We love them. Because of you, Joseph, tell them to come. We love them. We love to see your people. And then when he was going to bury uh, Jacob, he said, go with them. And then they selected people, key people from Egypt, and they went with him uh, to bury his father, Jacob. That was affection. But little by little by little, affection turned to affliction. It, it happens without even you knowing in the process of time and in your life if you don't understand you just glide and glide and glide from affection to affliction until God said the Lord said I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and I've heard their cry by reason of their task masters for I know their sorrows Look at this in verse 9 now. In verse 9, God repeated the same thing. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I have seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Oppressed them. But please 
understand. You see all those things they were doing. You oppressed them. You say, why didn't God remove that oppression at that time? You see, the children of Israel only knew about cattle because they were cattle rearers. But they needed strength and they needed uh, the ability and the skill to know how to build. Because in coming out, when they get to the wilderness, they'll be building the tabernacle. They'll be building the altars and all the things that God wanted them to build. So he allowed that, that they will have experience. Not only that, he toughened their mind. He made them tough and also their muscles. You see, in life, if you only eat, but there's no exercise, there's no movement, and you are walking in the office and see sitting, just sitting behind the text, your joints will not be able to carry your weight eventually. You become so big that your joints cannot carry you. You are not agile, you are not flexible, and your muscles are not strong. Your muscles are weakened. And so, if you are not to walk from Egypt and you are to walk to the land of Canaan, no chariot to carry you, you will not be able to do anything. Can you imagine all those three million people as they were going through the Red Sea? They will not carry anybody on the stretcher. They were all strong. There were not, not any feeble person among them. That's the reason God allowed that because all those things they were doing was they, they were developing them and making them strong physically in your life. If uh, you know you have some physical things to do and you do that with pleasure and you do that with a desire and you do that enjoying what you are doing. The physical things will strengthen you, will strengthen you to the point that all your inner organs and the and the bones and the joints and everything you'll be strong in Jesus' name. You will not be feeble. And if you have to carry anything, in fact, you might even decide that once in a while carry something and push something and pull something so that all those physical things you are doing will strengthen you for your future journey in Jesus name they were strong I will be strong I said I will be strong and you have to do something and practice something so that you'll be strong in Jesus name we're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 28 and I'm reading from verse 6 Deuteronomy chapter 20, 26 we're reading from verse 8 verse 6 rather thank you verse 6 we're looking at Deuteronomy 26 verse 6 and the Egyptians evil entreated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage and then in verse 7 in verse 7 and when we cried unto the Lord God of our fathers the Lord heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression then in verse 8 it says in verse 8 and the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand at the right time the Lord will bring you forth he'll bring you out and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders look at number two number two is the plan to assimilate and exterminate Israel what does that mean look at that Exodus chapter 1 reading from verse 15 and the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives of which the same is of of the one was Sephram and the name of the other poor in verse 16 and he said when ye do uh, when ye uh, do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then he shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. Why? 
Why would somebody have a kind of plan to say, if it's a baby boy, kill that boy, every one of them. Don't allow any baby boy to, uh, to live. But if it's a baby girl, save her alive. Why would somebody do that? Look at verse 22. In verse 22, and Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son, no exception, every son that is born, ye shall cast into the river, drown them, and every daughter ye shall save alive. What's the plan? Pharaoh, what do you have in mind? If all the boys are killed, then there'll be no nation called Israel. The girls are saved alive, and the Egyptians, when those girls grow up, no man, nobody to marry, they will marry the Egyptians. And so Egypt will remain, but Israel will be exterminated. That's the thing he was planning, that there will be no nation of Israel anymore. That all you will have will be the Egyptians and the men all dead because the older generation, they will grow and die. And all the younger generation, there will be no man, no boy, no youth, no teenager, and no young adult, no adult of men but only the girls will be growing and the girls don't have they don't know where to run to and there's no place to run to they'll be assimilated into egypt and then israel exterminated look at psalm 83 reading from verse 4 psalm 83 reading from verse 4 they have said come let us cut them off from being a nation that's the purpose let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance that was the plan but the Lord prostrated all the devices of the enemy and for you today say for me today the Lord will frustrate all the plans and the plot of the enemy against you and against your family. In Jesus' name. Let me say something now. You see, this is a church denomination. We have that other church denomination. This is Christian, let me use the word, religion. And then we have another religion. You know the name of that religion. There are people in the church. They have doctrine. They have everything intact. But they prevent their young people from getting married in time. The other people that do not have gospel doctrine holiness sanctification they allow their people to marry easily but logically those other other denominations will be growing and growing now the other religion apart from christianity will allow not only that they marry quickly but that they marry one and two and three and four and some of them go beyond the four what's the implication of that that religion will keep on growing even if they don't do evangelism even they do, if they don't do proselyting even if they don't rush after people to be converted to their religion they are multiplying but logically when a man has uh, you know four wives or five or six or seven and they're reproducing and then 
the church that is earnestly contending for the faith was delivered unto the saints our young people want to get married what are you thinking of marriage now what accommodation do you have what job do you have how much are you earning have you built a house are you mobile and all those questions anybody that cannot answer all those questions no marriage now in the future all those other people that get married easily we're not talking of compromising we're talking about easing up and allowing people that need to get married let them get married if jesus tarries even their children that were bring up in the christian way we will also grow in jesus name but if we don't even get married in time, do you know the time, uh, you know, some of the people in, you know, I don't know whether committee or whatever, the time I got married, how old are you now? I'm, you're too early. Why are you rushing? Why are you too much in a hurry? Now, when the older people die off, where is the church? Because late, late marriages, and they almost the ladies are almost getting beyond the age of giving birth before we allow them to marry let's understand the enemy can use us against ourselves that we will not multiply and then we'll be taking joy in the fact that we're firm we're street and we're destroying our future the lord will not use you to destroy your future the Lord will help you. Your children, young ones, they want to get married, is up. And let us move on. And this church will grow spiritually, will grow numerically, will go biologically. You will see your children and grandchildren and great grandchildren before you die in jesus name but as long as we tie the rope on their neck and we have this law this rule this regulation how can you see that may the lord give you wisdom we're looking at number three here number three we're looking at their path to advance and expand israel these children of israel themselves they had a patch they were going to play so that they will advance and so that they will expand we're looking at deuteronomy chapter 8 reading from verse 1 deuteronomy chapter 8 reading from verse 1 and uh, the commandments which i command thee this day shall ye observe to do that ye may live and multiply the commandments i give you i'm going to be watching if you're keeping these commandments and you are living by the word that i've given you then you will live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the lord swear unto your fathers we're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 30 reading from verse verse 5 it says and the lord thy god will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possess and thou shalt possess it and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers i didn't hear your amen multiply thee beyond and above thy fathers verse 6 in verse 6 and the lord thy god will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the lord thy god and all with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live when they gave themselves to the lord for their hearts to be circumcised and to love the lord with all their heart all their soul all their mind it released god to fulfill the promise to them that they will live and they will multiply we'll come to point number three now point number three the might 
and the preservation of Israel. The might and the preservation of Israel. Exodus chapter 1, we're reading from verse 9. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, it says, But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they, the children of uh, Egypt, they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Verse 20, the latter part of verse 20, it says, And the people multiplied and worked very mighty. The might and the preservation of Israel. We're, we're looking at three things here. Number one, more multiplication amidst the enemy's affliction. Number two, multiple might above excessive antagonism. Number three, ministerial mastery over extreme adversities. Let's look at number one. Number one is uh, the multiplication amidst the enemy's affliction. Even though they afflicted them, yet they multiplied. It tells us in Psalm 105 verse 24. Psalm 105 verse 24, and he increased his people greatly. They multiplied greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. You'll be stronger than your enemies in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes we have uh, children at home and then we have uh, servants, maids helping us at home. And our children and those, um, those helpers in the home, they are, more, they are almost of the same age. And we don't allow our children to do anything because it's my child. The girl will not allow her to learn how to cook. The helpers at home will do that. And then we don't allow our children to wash plates or wash clothes or wash anything or clean the house or make their bed. The people, those boys and girls of their age who are serving and helping at home, they're the people that do all those things now. The problem is those uh, servants or maids or, or helpers at home, they're going to have a better marriage in the future because they know how to cook, they know how to, you know, make their bed, they know how to clean the house, they know how to do everything. When they get married, although they were servants at home, they'll have better life than the children, our own children were pampering, we were are so rich, we have everything, we'll not allow them to walk, the car is there, if they're going a few, one kilometer ahead, we'll say, let the driver take them and go there, they'll be useless in the future, but if you expose your children to the same things those helpers are doing at home, you're preparing the children for the future. The people of Israel, they, all those people, they need to have the strength, they need to have the ability but it's the people that were doing the work for them that are becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. Let's learn from all this so that even in the present time, our families will be strong. And our generation will be stronger than all the lazy people that don't know how to do anything in Jesus' name. Uh, uh, can you see those people, those uh, young people who are living with you after they've done all that work and everything? Uh, they still go to do their homework. They go to do their assignment and they are awake. Why? The physical exertion and the way they are training themselves and the way all those things are getting results over them, uh, they keep them awake. 
and they're able to do their work. And even at the present time, our lazy children that we are not bringing up properly will not allow them to wash anything, touch anything, clean up anything. Their brain also, they cannot choose their brain. But these others who are being even over-labored, they are the people, academically they are strong. And in might they can bear whatever while well, your children you know will come home and say eh, daddy mommy somebody looked at me this way and bullied me i'm afraid to go to school those other children because of the rigor they are put to they're not afraid of any any bully they go back to school and they're doing well i pray god will give us wisdom that we train our children the same way we are training the people who are living with us in our families and you will be strong our children will be stronger stronger than their enemies and their bullies and their persecutors in jesus name and look at uh, Acts chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 24. Acts chapter 12, verse 24. But the word of God grew and multiplied. Uh, Herod laid hand on James and killed him. But the word of God grew and multiplied. Herod, in that same chapter, put uh, Peter in the prison. And he was thinking of kill him the following day. An angel came from heaven and delivered him. And even that fell. Herod, him, that, uh, Herod himself, he spoke and he said that's the voice of God, not the voice of a man. An angel came from heaven and smote him, finished him. But the word of God continued. Above our enemies, the word of God continued. Above those distract detractors, the word of God continued. And the word of God from your mouth will continue beyond your persecutors and your enemies in Jesus' name. We're looking at number two. Number two, multiple might above excessive antagonism. Uh, what we see in, um, in Exodus chapter 1, reading from verse 7, it says, and the children of Israel were fruitful. And the children of Israel were fruitful. We are the Israel of God. You'll be fruitful. In your family, you'll be fruitful. In the work of your heart, you'll be fruitful. Spiritually, you are tired of amen spiritually spiritually you'll be fruitful in jesus name we learn about you we learn about your children we learn about your grandchildren we will even hear about your great grandchildren in jesus name and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly abundant life will be yours and multiplied and what exceeding mighty and the land was filled with them look at verse 20 in verse 20 therefore god dealt well with the midwives you know what they did and god said because they walked according to his plan in the preservation of the children of Israel, he did well with the midwives. And if you today, if you walk in line with the plan of God for the church, if you walk progressing with the church and making the church to prosper and to grow and to progress, the Lord will deal well with you. And the people multiplied and worked very mighty mighty mightier very mighty we're looking at number three here number three ministerial mastery over extreme adversities if he did that for the children of israel now the church of the living god he will do more for us in jesus name as we continue what he has called us to as we concentrate on what he has given us to do this work will not fail in our hands we're looking at second timothy chapter 2 
I'm reading from verse 1. It says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, And the things that thou hast heard of me, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. The same commit to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Paul at Timothy, under his tutelage, under his training, and Timothy was to have faithful people that he will commit the work to. Now, a Paul, an aged person, will not allow the Timothys after him the spiritual sons after him to do anything at all uh -uh, they will spoil it they'll not do it well they'll not uh, put it right timothy will not grow and timothy will not have any advance at all it is through those mistakes timothy might make while paul was still alive and he will say no don't do it this way do it that way it's through that he will grow and timothy also if he held on to everything and said uh -uh, i'm not going to what paul had committed into my hands is so precious and none of these uh, younger people can handle it the work will not grow what happens in the physical that we do not allow our children uh, when i say our children our young adults to get married in time the same thing will happen in the spiritual that we don't commit anything to the hands of the younger generation of believers their youth we don't even give them an, a chance we want to have a um, you know youth church in that group in that group in that group and then we look for each little we we'll say we cannot find really we are afraid if we commit anything to these people young people are young people they will spoil the church and the you know youthful exuberance will overtake them look at what the apostle is saying by the spirit of god the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men the faithful young men the faithful younger sisters and we commit to their hands who shall be able to teach others also we will do it in jesus name you know when some of these uh, young people will say they are young and there may be something happens that uh, you know upsets them and they go to you know the church across the road or the church across town once they see them where are you coming from i'm deeper life come and then they give them maybe a pastoral position and those young people that we will not use here they are helping those churches and those denominations they're preaching the word and they're developing strategies and making those churches to grow i pray that we will not be losing our young people and our our younger generation to all those churches in jesus name we'll train them we'll equip them we'll engage them will enlist them in the work of the lord and this work will prosper in their hands while we're still alive in jesus name in the headquarters amen look at look at verse 3 in verse 3 it says thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of jesus christ look at verse 4 in verse 4 no man that worries entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who are chosen him to be a soldier verse 5 and if any man also strive for masteries that's what we should strive for in our lives in our profession in our work in our family in our ministry strive for mastery any difficulty any challenge master that so that by the grace of god we have ministerial mastery over extreme adversity yet you see not crowd except a strive 
lawfully. I pray that everything we need to master, every area of ministry the Lord has committed into our hands, the Lord will give us in Jesus' name. And everything we're hearing, we will effect them, practice them, so that there will be a performance by God of all his promises and prophecies in our lives, in our church, in our ministry, in our families, in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and take whatever we have learned today to the Lord in prayer, that God will help us, will be doers of the word, will, be, will not be hearers only. Please open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.